Hi there. What if I told you that there was something that was capping your income exactly where it is today or as an average of where it's always been, whether that's in working for somebody else or if you have your own business particularly? There's a series of things that is going on in our body, our energy, our mind that all kind of joins together to create what we call an income set point. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to be talking to you about this specifically because what I see around me is there is a lot of um, discomfort around money and fear around there not being enough. Um, and I totally get that. Right. I totally get that. I still go to that place from time to time. It's really hard to trust that there's enough for you and for everybody else and that the money's coming when you're in that place of this just doesn't feel safe. I don't have enough. I get that. OK. And what I want to tell you is that, first of all, today's part one is, is just why the real reason your income is stuck where it is. OK. Our income is a very specific type of money, if you like. And it's all about our value and worth in the world, or should I say perceived value and worth in the world. Now, when we look at our upbringing, no matter who you lived with, no matter who your main caregiver was, they will have had thoughts, feelings and behaviours around money which they will have got from their caregivers and their caregivers and their caregivers and so on and so forth back through time. OK, now, particularly in the last sort of three or four generations, there was a lot of fear generally around money that it wasn't there wasn't enough. Um, there was a big divide between us and them, right, the working class and the other classes, and that it had to be really hard, that you had to work hard to earn it um, and you couldn't earn from something that wasn't a proper job. And that just, you know, the Industrial Revolution and all of that, our forefathers, if you want to call it that, grandparents, great grandparents, they were taught that you had to work hard for your money for the most part. I know there's exceptions to every rule and there's, that's the caveat here. But for the most part, we are carrying around generational money programming that tells you that you're only worth a certain amount and that this family doesn't earn more than X amount. And that <clears throat> if you do, then, you know, you might be being big for your boots or that if you try to do that from uh, making a business out of your gift, if you like your, you know, your coaching, your healing, your services, then that's somehow wrong because it's not a real job. It's not tangible. You're not trading your time for money and that you have to work really hard for any money that you do get to almost to prove that you're worth it. Right. Outwardly so that other people see you working hard, you know, first in, last out. It's a big thing in corporate. Tell me I'm wrong, right? We've, we've probably all seen it. But what's going on in your money is all of this programming that you saw as a, you won't have seen it as programming, but it was going on when you were a child. So between the ages of naught and seven, seven or eight years old, you will, you will have heard, seen and felt and experienced your caregiver's energy around money. You will have seen and heard how they act and what they say when they're handling money bills and finances and you will have felt the energy in the room now that might have meant that they were talking about it all the time but there was arguments it might have meant that they never talked about it at all and you didn't because it was a taboo subject it doesn't matter and it might have been somewhere in between now if money if there was more abundance than lack great stuff there may still have been some kind of a a phrase or an attitude that your parents would have said like oh it's okay for them or we'll never be like them or whatever and in the next couple of weeks or so we're going to fish around for that and I'm just going to give you a few hints and tips because I am actually bringing out um, just a, a very short four week masterclass around helping you to feel more empowered around money to earn more to save more to clear off debt and to cut those toxic ties to um, people who owe you money have to give you money any kind of what we call toxic money right because i want you to feel empowered around money <clears throat> this is life-changing stuff that i'm going to take you through and there is going to be an invitation to join me in a four-week masterclass that's running through april um that you will have for life and, and all the rest of it but for now i just want you to know that when you think about your money there's usually three things going on there's the thoughts and feelings in your head so the things you're saying to yourself OK, what you hear, oh, you know, I'll never be rich because or I'll never get rid of this debt because or I'm so disappointed in myself. I should be doing better by now, whatever that is for you. And it will differ depending on whether you're looking at 
income savings debt or what or your or the goals that you set yourself to excuse me i'm itchy today um and then so you've got your thoughts and feelings about your thoughts and and things you're saying to yourself then you've got the emotions behind it so when you look at your bank account when you look at your income what's the first emotion that comes to mind okay we're going to go through all of that in this masterclass this four week masterclass because that's very telling that tells you what your nervous system is wired to run with every time you think about the amount of money you do bring in or about the amount of money you'd like to bring in bang you go straight into that emotion and with all the will in the world if it's not a nice one you ain't going to run towards it and therefore you're not going to put all your efforts into bringing more money in because it triggers that emotion does that make sense and then the third thing is the connected trauma so somewhere along the line between zero and eight there will be something that you have witnessed um seen heard felt sensed whatever experienced in some way around money mainly to do with your family and how it happens in your family and what you're allowed to have and, and all the rest of it and how hard it has to be that will leave you feeling either sad like there's been a big loss really disappointed um guilty all these different feelings now it doesn't necessarily have had to have been about money either you could have had a loss of a, of a parent or a grandparent that left you so sad and, and such a feeling of loss that that shows up in your savings. Because the big truth here, the real truth, the real secret that not many people are talking about as to why your income is stuck where it is, is that we have certain thoughts, feelings and experiences and connected trauma that get wired into our nervous system. And we let's take this in. We manifest our money to match that feeling because then we feel safe i know right it's it's kind of messed up in a way but the amygdala is always looking for an energetic emotional match right do i feel safe does this emotion feel safe to me even if it's horrible if it feels safe that's more important because it's known which means it's not a risk because anything that's risky that we don't know about could kill us in, in our amygdala's world, right? So any time we deal with money, not only do we feel a certain thing, depending on what went on, we also feel that certain thing when we think about sorting it out and bringing more in, right? So actually we feel safer in that horrible emotion of, oh, it's not enough, I don't feel safe, or I'm so disappointed because it's known, because it's already in our nervous system, it's familiar. I know, I know. This meat suit, it's not designed for this kind of thing. It's literally designed to stop a bear killing us or whatever, you know, and to help us propagate the species. It's not so finely tuned when it comes to things like dealing with your money and, and whatever, but I want to help you change that, okay? So tune in to the next video, which is all going to be about keeping up with the Joneses, right? Your earliest money paradigm and how that impacted you and what you're carrying forward as a result. So if you liked this, I would love it if you would either reply, if this is in a, an email or wherever you're consuming this video or this information, leave me a comment, leave me a message. You can always email me at hello at innersmileeft.com and let me know, or you can reply to my um, newsletters if this is where you consume this video. But it's really important to me that you don't blame yourself because this is not your fault. This is the way the body is chemically and biologically and energetically wired to keep us safe, even if that place feels like crap, right? Sorry for the C-bomb, but it is what it is. Sometimes those words are the only ones that apply. So I want you to take that in today. Let me know if that drops a penny for you. If you've already done some money mapping with me before, this will be familiar. But as we go through these next few weeks, I'm going to be talking more and more and more, and I'm going to be shedding more light on why you might be stuck in a certain place in your income with not enough savings or none at all, carrying around debt like I was, 50 grand for most of my adult life, it's gone. And why you feel that you can't maybe set financial goals for yourself and really what's stopping you, having the financial life that you want and deserve. So I can't wait to see you next time. Take care for now.